Right off the bat, it's increased revenues, it's uh, reduced cost, it's reduced risk, increased tangible values. In other words, it could be brand recognition. And there's also the uh, positive impact on, on society and the environment. So I think, I think this is a, a clear, clear solution for a triple bottom line. If you think about starting a business today, designing a business around a circular economy philosophy, ultimately is going to give you better returns in the long run because it's going to, be, it's going to uh, use your sources more efficiently, it's going to use more efficient energy, it's going to treat customers, I believe, in a way that over the next five or ten years customers will want to be treated. So I, I think commercially it's, 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 a, it's a savvy way to progress. Why would you throw something away that's, that's valuable? Why would you do that? Uh, and, and, I, and I hope, I think it's the West who are perhaps lagging behind. We are in such a throwaway economy whilst in the places where there is, there is less, uh, less stuff, then I think we're seeing that they are using it more efficiently. We've um, embarked on a journey towards sustainability a number of years ago in many of our other companies, and we've realized that sustainability in the environment uh, provides us with opportunities. And we don't see environmental legislation or environmental mandate, mandates as a threat. We see it as an opportunity from a cost perspective, from a brand perspective, from developing products that utilize a high content of recycled materials. So essentially, it's created a platform for us to innovate. There are a lot of customers that value uh, sustainability and uh, doing good for the environment. And they choose for interface uh, on behalf of that. But still a lot of customers uh, for a lot of customers, sustainability is only a secondary consideration. They primarily choose for us for the prime function that they expect from our product. It's design, uh, it's uh, low cost of ownership, it is uh, functionality. And what is fantastic, that is a lot of these design uh, features and a lot of these functionality uh, features uh, have their uh, uh, origin in a sustainable development. In that sense I'm pretty optimistic because you see that more and more companies are uh, getting that and, uh, and are realizing that. I think it's also pretty clear that uh, companies with a strong sustainability uh, vision are often the more successful uh, companies. So that is an inspiration uh, in itself. And look at Interface. Uh, we are with a distance the market leader in, in our industry. We are uh, performing also financially very, very well. And uh, yeah, we are an inspiration source uh, for the industry uh, in general and certainly for the carpet industry. If you're using material which is, was otherwise waste material, if you're getting very um, significant reductions in, in pollution and waste uh, and, and you're using waste materials as your fundamental building blocks, then you ought to be able to reduce costs and also improve output from the same resource base. But last year we gave a check back to our CFO, £180 million pounds saved. Less energy, less waste, less packaging, less carry bags. It all saved money for the business. Fantastic, she can open new stores to help us grow into the future. Also brought us more than that. We're the most, one of the most trusted brands in the UK. We've got high levels of trust and confidence for our employee base, which drives them to go through the extra mile through a lot of change in, in the retail marketplace. It's created more resilience in our supply chains as they're increasingly affected by social challenge and extreme weather events as well. So Marks & Spencer is a fundamentally better business today for doing plan over the last decade. But it is not enough and we need to redouble our efforts into the future. And equally, the business case will be many times larger in the future if we land this model properly for our customers. Uh, Renault is able to produce from 30 to 50% cheaper for the customer because they've been able to optimize this process and about 80% of uh, their cost of production, so energy, water, and so on and so forth, has been reduced drastically as well. So if we take Renault as a case study, it definitely shows that circular economy not only is good for us, but is also financially very strong to generate uh, competitive advantage. In this case, because of cost reduction and, uh, and attractivity uh, of the same process, uh, for the same product actually in the market. Certainly, if you talk to the likes of the World Economic Forum, if you talk to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, if you talk to um, 
If you talk to McKinsey, they will say yes, without a doubt. They've done a lot of detailed modeling work that suggests massive opportunities um, for, for companies who work towards a circular economy. And recently, I think a report came out by Accenture, who are a consultancy very much engaged in this agenda. And they said for companies that um, basically move towards circular business models by 2030, there's a 4.5 trillion US dollar reward just waiting for them. For the manufacturer, it's great because it helps them, I think, in terms of um, their supply chains, in terms of safeguarding raw materials going forward. So companies now are being faced with kind of price volatility um, in their supply chains with regards to how they source certain materials um, needed for their, for their products and, and services. And if they can actually take back these materials again and again and reuse them again and again in their own supply chains, um, it just creates, it future proofs, if you like, their business model going forward. It gives them security of supply. Adopting a new model, uh, an economic model, requires um, probably new uh, innovation uh, approaches to things. It could be a product innovation, um, it could be a process innovation. So, so in essence, the, uh, a, a great positive impact of, of, a, of a model like the circular economy would be um, innovation. Um, it is uh, then we have, um, and, and this could be disruptive. It could be disruptive innovation uh, in a positive way, of course. We can never underestimate the power of the social impact that you're achieving through the circular economy. I think the world is facing a number of challenges. I mean, we have a challenge of environmental impacts, but we also have a challenge of the divide between rich and poor. And through the circular economy, you're able to address this problem because there's a place for everybody in the circular economy.